Hello there and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully and I'm here to share um, some tips on rotational grazing um, and how we rotationally graze our livestock on our small homestead. Um, you've heard me talk about this if you've been listening to um, our YouTube series for a while. Um, you've heard me talk about this in kind of a general sense. Um, the way that we rotationally graze our livestock in order to keep the pasture um, in good condition and keep our parasite load down. Um, but today I really wanted to share a little bit more detail about how we do that. Um, and when I say we, I really have to give credit to Rick because he does a lot of the hard work um, on a weekly basis to keep uh, moving fencing. Um, and he has a great system for how to do that. He has kind of a pattern that he set up so that he can um, open up a new area of pasture with new fencing in about 20 minutes or so. I actually timed him the other day. Um, so what we mean by rotationally grazing is that if you have a big field, um, and in our example, we have about three open acres in one field. Um, if you have a large area and um, not enough animals to kind of eat down all that grass at once, um, what you wanna do is subdivide that into smaller sections um, this is also known as strip grazing because you're just giving the animals a small strip um, of access. And that forces um, a couple of things to happen. One is the animals will go into an area and they'll eat more of what's available. Um, if, they, if they don't have as much uh, geography to pick and choose the best grasses or the tastiest things that they like, they're more likely to eat the weeds and the other things that they don't like as much. Um, and that helps keep the weeds down and make sure um, that the, the tastiest grasses don't get overgrazed. The other thing it does is um, by limiting the space that they're on at any one time, you're allowing other sections of the pasture to regrow and you're also allowing that parasite load to go down. Um, most internal worms um, that sheep and llamas get have about a two week lifespan, two to three week lifespan. And so if you put sheep into an area, let them graze it for a few days and then take it off and don't put them in for at least two to three weeks after that, the um, eggs of those parasites will hatch, but the worms won't have a host. So they'll die off and then you'll have fewer parasites in that area the next time you graze your sheep. Um, and like I said, it also gives the pasture time to regrow. Our pasture is still very thin um, and kind of reedy in places. And um, that's because our soil is quite poor and we've reclaimed from forested area. So anything we can do to help our pasture out, whether it's you know not overgrazing in times when it's dry, not putting the sheep out too early in the spring, um, and allowing that grass to grow back um, without you know the pressure of them grazing on it, all those things are helping our pasture look better. Um, year over year. So the way that we do this is we have a perimeter fence that's electric, electrified. It's a five strand high tensile um, wire fence and that's pretty much the standard for sheep grazing up here in New England. Um, it's good because it helps keep predators out of the pasture and it helps keep the sheep in where they're supposed to be. Um, you know I've heard different comments um, from people who are not farmers um, that say, oh, that's, you know, that's cruel or doesn't that mean to have an electric fence? Um, but it really isn't because the sheep are not encountering that fence regularly. In fact, they may only encounter the fence once when they're little to see, oh, what's this barrier here? Once they encounter that fence, um, they do get shocked and they learn really quickly that, you know, that's a no-go area. And so just having that visual, being able to see the fence up keeps them where they need to be, lets them know where they want to be. And um, sheep really do naturally have a range and they like to feel safe. So our sheep know that if they're in the fence, they're safe. And if they get out of the fence, for some reason, it has happened a couple times, they tend to kind of panic because then they're in a new territory and there could be predators or other dangers there. So I think having that visual barrier there um, reinforces, you know, hey, don't go over here but they understand that that's for their own safety and they're happy when they're in their fence. Um, the other thing that the, the electric fence allows us to do is make any kind of internal division of our, our pasture area that we would like. And we do that with a 
um, three strands of electrified wire on a reel system. So um, this is pretty easy to use. You just pick up the reel, put it at one end where you want to start your fence, and then you can just reel out line and the fence has these um, hooks on it. And so you just hook it onto the permanent fencing and that energizes um, those three strands. And so you can use this to subdivide your pasture. Um, so the way that Rick blocks off the big field is he makes these kinds of L shapes. Um, the entrance to our pasture is on one corner of, you can think of it as a big rectangle or parallelogram. Um, so the entrance is on one corner and so you have to kind of go up and over and then you go up and over for the next piece. Um, and he's gotten really good at, you know, kind of planning his route and, okay, I'm going to go down, turn off the fence, I'm going to walk to the end, unhook, reel in, you know, walk back to this point, move my stakes. And so he can do that without having extra trips back and forth because he's always either like picking up stakes and then going back to reel fence in or putting stakes out while he's deploying the fence or things like that to kind of make his movements more efficient and make the whole process, um, like I said, also very time, time efficient as well. Um, so that's what we do for our fencing. Of course, um, there are other fencing systems out there. Um, I know some shepherds that just kind of, when they lay out a new area of pasture, they put in permanent welded wire fencing. And so they always have the same subdivisions and they kind of rotate their sheep through those. Um, we have friends in England that, that have, um, they use a, like a thick um, shrub border. Um, sometimes combined with a rock wall, and that defines the area of fencing. And there is fence there too, but it's mostly this shrubbery that you see. And so they have a bunch of little paddocks that they turn the sheep out into. So there are multiple ways to do this, and I'm not saying that electrified is necessarily the best way. It really depends on your style of farming and your landscape. Um, but it does give you a lot of flexibility, and it means that you know you could easily fence off or skip areas where you're maybe if your pasture is getting damaged or something and you don't want to put the sheep on that particular section, you can keep them out of places. We also use that um, three-stranded wire fencing um, on the reels to fence areas that are outside of the paddock because, again, as long as we're coming off the fence on the outside, then we can electrify any area that we want, make any shape that we want. Yeah. So we have a pasture on the left side of the driveway and the right side of the driveway with the drive going down the center. And obviously that's open so that we can drive up and down with our cars. But if we wanted to graze that section, we just run a chunk of temporary fence at the top and at the very bottom. And then they have that sort of aisle of the driveway and they can go mow that for us so Rick doesn't have to do as much um, string trimming. So there's all kinds of ways that you can adapt um, an electrified system to your needs. And um, they're also fairly economical and easy to repair. So I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, I hope you uh, find this video useful. And I do recommend hiring a professional in your area, especially um, the first time you're setting up your fencing, just to kind of go over the fence with you. Even if um, they're not going to install it for you, they can show you how to effectively drive posts, um, attach all the, you know, electric electrical parts of it and get it set up properly. So um, do consult with an expert, at least in the beginning stages, and then you can learn how to do the repairs and other modifications um, down the line. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more tips and tricks for farming and homesteading. Cheers.